Welcome to the Biggest Loser Betting Show, the dumbest betting show on earth. And uh, I'm really sad that we have to be doing this right now. This is a sick, cruel world that we live in. Let's look at the results from last week where it was a no good, very bad week for Larry, Carter, and myself. We lost all three of our bets. All three of us lost all three of our bets. Dion, however, did carry the torch for the show. He won all three of his bets. He's up $461 on the week. What did that do to the overall season standings? Well, I'm glad you asked. Dion has now taken the lead. He's the only person in the green. Larry and Carter still going down, down, down. Uh, me, I am now barely in the negative, but Dion, I'm coming for you next week. Let's get to the show where this week, three of us are wearing sports bras. This was the punishment chosen by Dion himself. Dion, would you like to say anything about why we are doing this right now? Yeah, I mean, it's just disgusting behavior to go combined 0 for 9. I had some other punishments in mind that I thought were a little too cruel, so I thought this is for my own personal enjoyment, plus it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good on some of the clips this week. Cart, how are you feeling? Are you uh, in touch with your feminine self? Uh, it's, it's, this is just, like, very uncomfortable. <laughs> no support? Nothing up there that you're feeling? Oh, uh, no, it's just like, I don't know. I, I just don't understand the mystique of these things. Larry, are we positive that you're even wearing a bra? Is that just a tank top? It's not a tank top. Can we get visual confirmation of that? Okay, there we go. We got it. Thank you so much. Uh, All right, let's get straight to our bet because I hate this. Dion, you're going to go first this week since you won last week. What's bet number one? Uh, Bet number one for me is the Dolphins minus five. Uh, I have a little bit of a theme with two of my picks. I'm essentially betting on teams that are going against teams that I think are dead. The Bears traded Rokon Smith and um, whatever Robert Quinn to the Eagles. That team's dead. Uh, They brought in Chase Claypool, which I kind of like, but that's next year. They don't have a good enough offensive line to where that matters, so I think the Dolphins wind up blowing them out. Larry, do you like this? I love this pick. It's a great pick. I probably would have pushed that up to about six and a half, seven. Wow. Good start, Dion. What's bet number two? Bet number two. Uh, like I said, rolling with the theme. Packers minus three and a half against the Lions. They traded TJ Hawkins Smith in division today. Um, I was actually on the phone with Cart when, <laughs> when that trade went down. And just he- hearing him be dead inside when the trade happened, and that's a fan. So imagine if you're a veteran on this team or someone like DeAndre Swift. There's no way that they're bought into playing football right now. Cart, he mentioned that you're dead inside, probably true, as your team has a five-point deficit to a Division Two school right now on the basketball court. But he also pronounced Hawkinson, Hawkinsmith. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's pretty fitting with how my life's going. Um, so... Honestly, I can't even put up there, stick up for myself anymore. Good to know. Dion, bet number three, what do you got? Uh, that's my fault on the name pronunciation, TJ. Uh, the only TJ I uh, recognize is McConnell anyway. So uh, third bet, two lane minus seven and a half, um, 150 to win 136. They're going against Tulsa. That team's three and five. They're completely dead. The bowl game's over for them. Tulane ranked this week. Big game for them on the roll at Tulsa. I think they blow them out. Uh, so you pulled the classic Tulane Tulsa off here. I've never been able to tell those two teams apart. However, uh, saying that Tulsa's bowl game thing is dead when they only have five losses seems a little premature. They could 100% win out and make a bowl game, correct? Uh, well, so I'm a fan of West Virginia uh, who has the same record, dead. So we're just <laughs> just out got of it. Okay, I respect the theme. I'll give you that, Dion. We'll see how it goes this week. I'm up next because as all three of us lost equally, uh, I was the reigning champ the week before, and that's what we're going off of, gentlemen. So, Larry, you're going to go after me. Cart is going last uh, on the Biggest Loser, which is essentially the Carter Elliott show. Bet number one for me. I was actually the reigning champ last week, but I. I was just going to say, white privilege is wild. Yeah, you're right. This yeah, is I, I clearly pure, won last week. <laughs> this is a pure white privilege move. Uh, you know what? I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to step aside, Larry. Go ahead. Floor is yours. Oh, now he wants to be an Indian giver. So my first bet, I'm going Vikings minus six and a half against the Washington Commanders. 220 pays out 282. Uh, the original spread is minus three and a half. They just picked up TJ Hawkinson. They average, the Vikings average like 25 points per game. And to Dion's point, 
Washington is dead in the water. They just traded their best secondary player. They stink. I'm going with Vikings minus six and a half. Uh, can I take this one? Yeah. Go ahead. So the, the secondary player they traded is injured, and they're going to cut him anyway. <laughs> William Jackson. His back is hurt. They just <laughs> won last weekend on like a last-second touchdown. This team uh, is very far from dead. What do they have? Chase Young got activated off the PUP list this week, and Taylor Heineke's my guy. Uh, he's already he, ruled out. No, I mean, he's still activated off the PUP yeah, list. Yeah, you, I mean, you're a Heineke fan, and you're going to be biased. They're going to get smoked. <laughs> okay. That bet stinks. Move on. Yeah, that bet's awful. And the reasoning right, behind so the bet, bet is worse than the bet. <laughs> next bet, I got North Carolina minus 7.5 against Virginia, who stinks. TCU minus 9.5 against Texas Tech. Plus 264, 140 pays out 371. Uh, Texas Tech quarterback Donovan Smith is garbage. Uh, TCU quarterback, I actually like him. He showed, like, he's he's lives for those big moments. I like this parlay. 140 pays 371. I'll take that Carter, one. What do you I'm, think? Actually a, I'm actually a fan of that, uh, Larry. I'll, uh, I definitely like the um, the North Carolina against uh, Virginia bet. Virginia is not going to be able to stop North Carolina offensively. That game, I think, is going to get ugly. Uh, not necessarily sure how I feel about the other one. Texas Tech's, like, sneaky kind of pull off an upset that ruins TCU season type, type game going on. But uh, it's, it's not bad. Uh, my last think? bet, yeah, another parlay, Bills. Minus seven and a half alternate spread. They were at minus 13 against the Jets. I brought it down to minus seven and a half. Chiefs were at minus 12 and a half against the Titans. I brought that down to minus five and a half. And I got the Ravens minus three against the Saints. I like this parlay. I'll take it. Uh, I think all three of these individually are good plays that I would lean with and agree with. I just don't love the strategy of doing so many parlays on this show anymore. That's just a personal thing. I did those in the first couple weeks. Didn't work out. Uh, I've started winning a little bit more other than this past week by not doing parlays. So I'm skeptical of you, Larry, but I like the picks themselves. (laughs) Let's go to my picks now. Uh, Cart, are you okay with me reinstituting white privilege here and going before you or no? No, that's fine. Can I ask Larry one question before we move on, though? Sure. Larry, when's the last time you've been to church? <laughs> I know right, why he's ahead, asking Greg. me go, that. I know why he's Greg. asking me that. No, go ahead, Greg. Go ahead. <laughs> it's an ab soul hat, bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go, go I ahead, know Greg. why you asked that, too. Is the, what, would you, what would Jesus do for this? He, he kind of built like ab soul, if we're being honest. Carter, can I... Can I continue now or or do you have more here no nope, that's it okay thank you uh dion i think you might like this with your theme for the week my first pick is kansas money line over oklahoma state they are plus 115 underdogs at home against a team that just lost 48 to nothing when they had a conference championship still ahead of them to play for they no longer do. I've never seen a team look more dead than Oklahoma State did last week when they should have been motivated. I don't know how they get up for this game. Kansas can score points, and right now the four of us could score points on the Oklahoma State defense. Dion, what do you think? Yeah, I've said it a few times on this show. I don't like Spencer Sanders a ton, so I like this pick a lot. Kansas is just really, really fun to watch and bet on, too. So, Yeah, thank you. All right, bet number two. Uh, I'm getting bold with my next two boys. I'm going Tennessee money line against Georgia. I'm not taking the points. I'm taking the money lines. Plus 240, $150 to win 360. You saw me do this against Alabama. It led to me winning the show. I think Tennessee is the best team in the country, straight up. I think Georgia's vulnerable. They almost lost to Kent State. Then they almost lost to Missouri. That was back-to-back weeks. Like That was not like a two-random letdown thing. I, and I get they could just sleepwalk against bad teams. I don't think they're as good. They lost like 19 guys to the NFL from last year. Tennessee has popped everybody they played. We thought Kentucky was going to cover on them in the trap spot last week. They won by 80. Give me the Vols. Carter, what do you think? Uh, Did they struggle with Kent State this year, or is that completely made up? They won by 11, I think, against Kent State, and it was tied in the fourth Uh quarter. Okay. Yeah, uh, I as much as I believe in Tennessee, like I, I just think Georgia's different. To be honest with you, so I I don't I would be more in that I'd be more on board with you if you would have picked the spread to win the football game. I don't think that happens. 
Only takes one, Cart, but noted. Thank you for your clever analysis there. Bet number three for me, LSU money line plus 400 to beat Alabama. Now, I'm not going to lie. This is a little bit of a heat check, and I want to be bold, but I'm not hot. So I don't know how heat checks work when you're not hot. Alabama, I think, is fraudulent. That's all I have to say about them. They should have three losses on the season. They beat Texas because Texas's kicker was fucking up shit, and they, there was a phantom hold that didn't happen. They beat Texas A&M because Texas A&M is completely incompetent. This Bama team is not the normal Bama. LSU is super dangerous at times when they want to be. This rivalry is always close. They got a quarterback who can just maneuver out of the pocket and make plays on the run the same way Hennon Hooker did against Bama. I think this has a real shot. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but plus 400 is way too good of odds. I'll throw 50 bucks on it to win 200. Larry, what do you think? I think Joe Burrow ain't walking through that door, bro. <laughs> That's fair. All right, Cart, your bets. What do you got, number one? All right, number one, I actually got an NFL bet this week. I think this might be the first one for me uh, on here. Realize there's other football being played on Sunday. Uh, I got Chargers minus three against the Falcons. Um, I think that Austin Eckler is going to be able to run all over these guys. Uh, last week, Dante Foreman, for the great story that he is, I mean, he ran all over this team. And a team that's quarterbacked by P.J. Walker was able to absolutely throw all over this team. I think Justin Herbert will be able to do that. I think they'll get on track on this game. I think that the great story that the Falcons are being 4-4 four and four this year it's a little bit levels to me. So I think that uh, the Chargers pull out this game, and I'll take that at minus three. Uh, anybody want this, Dion? You're nodding. It seems like you might Yeah, want I like that bet. Um, I gained a ton of uh, disrespect to the Falcons watching the Bengals on Monday struggle against the Browns' defense at, like a week after they completely torched the Falcons. I think Herbert does the same thing Burrow did. Interesting. Cart, bet number two. I bet number two, we are going Ohio State minus 38 versus Northwestern. Okay, if anyone has watched Northwestern this year for some reason, they're one of the worst teams in the country, not just in the Big Ten. This is not your grandma, your mother's Northwestern of the past couple years that are bound to pull off an upset in the Big Ten. This team is absolutely god-awful. They made Iowa look good offensively. C.J. Stroud might throw for 1,000 yards. If he plays past the second quarter, they will cover. Uh, Larry, you laughed. I have thoughts on this as well, but I want to hear yours first. What do you got? I like this, man. I stood away from this. I almost took it, but I stood away from it because I was like 38 points is a lot of fucking points. But Northwestern Northwestern stinks, and C.J. Stroud is that dude. And he has a ton of fucking help on that offense. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think Stroud plays deep into the fourth in this game. Ryan Day knows what the playoff committee is doing right now. He needs style points, and, I mean, he's going to pull a hard ball and run some trick plays up big. I like it. Cart, bet number three, what do you got? Bet number three, we got Clemson minus four versus Notre Dame. I feel like Notre Dame plus four, Notre Dame money line is the absolute, like, everyone wants to pick that this week. Everyone's calling Clemson fraud. I think they use that as motivation this week. I think they have a chance. They are a better football team than Notre Dame. Yes, Notre Dame went into Syracuse and got the win last week, but I thought it was more Syracuse giving them that. They got some turnovers. They had a pick six to start the game. Uh, I still don't think that this Notre Dame football team is necessarily good. Uh, so Clemson coming off a bye week as well, I think gets their heads on straight, and I think they win this game by at least a touchdown. I tend to agree with you, Cart, here. I think Notre Dame's not good. The only thing that scares me is Notre Dame's bipolar, and they always do what you don't think they're going to do. This seems like it could be a really good fade myself spot, but my gut's with you that Clemson minus four is the number, and it terrifies me that I love all three of your picks this week, but I do, my friend. Thank you. I like them, too. Shit. Look look at Cart. I mean, you could put the man in a sports bra, and all of a sudden he starts winning. (laughs) (laughs) Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, he went away from betting Michigan State two of his three picks, which <laughs> has well, been a Illinois, theme. Illinois so minus helps. 16 and a half was fired up. Cart, do you have anything to say about the violent attack that Michigan State's players committed this week? Uh, I just want to say that I commend Michigan State Athletic Department and – Athletic director Holler on doing the right thing, suspending the right players, and acting swiftly. Um, all the you know racial undertones are noted by Michigan fans out there as well. You thugs, Dion. <laughs> uh, hot take: the Michigan player that 
got jumped or whatever should also be suspended. I thought you were coming with the blame the tunnel take that you. I don't think he should be suspended at all because if you saw what Keon Coleman posted on his Instagram, he's been through enough. He got jumped on the game. He got jumped in the game and jumped on social media. So, I, I, so I do blame the tunnel. I'm not. I don't. I didn't want to go into detail. I wanted to keep it short. That's why I, that kid had no. There was nothing good that was going to happen from that kid running into that tunnel. So he should also be suspended. Can we get a quick blame the tunnel or no? Yeah, l- listen, if you logistically have to not have two teams go into the tunnel at the same time, the easier solution is building a damn second tunnel. Save everybody some time. If three guys in a sports bra say a bet on a show, <laughs> does that mean they're going to win? Find out next week on The Biggest Loser.